This video was brought to you by Patreon. Support my activism and gain early access to all my videos for only $1 a month. It has only been two weeks since Watchtower announced the introduction of two new governing body members, Mr. Gag and Mr. Jeff. My name is Jeff. And God's Anointed are already being put to good use in the production of propaganda. If you're not too familiar with Jehovah's Witnesses, you might want to know that the bulk of their activities, or as they call it, their service to Jehovah, is carried out by unpaid volunteers. This includes the ministry, going out and handing religious tracts to people, and the construction of new facilities to produce such religious propaganda. But how does the Watchtower Corporation convince its members to devote their lives to this cause, without them receiving a single dollar in return? Today, we're gonna be watching together this new video released by Watchtower, urging its members to become volunteers. As we watch, notice how Watchtower uses both video and music to manipulate their audience into surrendering their lives to the cause. If you enjoy the video, please don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so YouTube can recommend this video to more people. Thank you so much. The willing spirit of Jehovah's people has always made feelings of appreciation well up in our Heavenly Father's heart. For example, consider the attitude displayed by the nation of Israel in supporting the construction of the tabernacle in 1512 BCE. As impressive as that structure was, the Watchtower of December 15, 2014 stated, What brought Jehovah the most pleasure was not the material offerings, but the willing spirit of those who thus supported pure worship. Exodus 36.2 describes how Bezalel, Aholiab, and other skilled men took the lead in constructing the tabernacle, but many others volunteered. We are told that everyone whose heart impelled him had a share. All these people were a special source of joy to Jehovah. I find it fascinating how every time Watchtower makes a video on construction projects, they have to resort to using examples from the book of Exodus. <laughs> because you know, the New Testament has zero examples of Christians starting huge construction projects for their God. <laughs> By establishing a divine precedent, Watchtower wants Jehovah's Witnesses to compare themselves with the Israelites and to believe these building projects have God's backing. But do they? Even if we take the Exodus story as historical fact, which it's not, but okay, we see some big differences between the two. In Exodus, the tabernacle was a project ordered by God himself, through Moses. Yahweh was the architect of the tent, every measurement, every material, and the method in which the project would be funded was all devised by God. Jehovah's Witnesses cannot claim such direct divine guidance. So comparing themselves to the Israelites is quite the stretch. <laughs> also, Jeff gives the impression that all the Israelites contributing to the tabernacle were willing donors, which may have been the case for the tabernacle itself, <laughs> but once the tent was set up and those sacrifices were rolling, giving was an obligation. Israelites had to sacrifice an animal or part of their crops every festival, after touching something unclean, after having a baby, and to spare the life of their firstborn son. Oh, and don't forget, they also had to give one-tenth of their produce to the priests. I would not call these sacrifices voluntary, Mr. Jeff. Anyways, in the first minute we have some flimsy biblical precedent, now let's see another technique used for recruitment. Next, Watchtower presents us three very scripted interviews from volunteers that are on special full-time service. That is, they live in the branch office of their particular countries. Watchtower feeds them and gives them a place to stay, but they are still unpaid volunteers. Notice how Watchtower focuses on the assignments being fun and enjoyable. Also notice the music they have selected for this portion. The personnel committee has prepared the following report to highlight some of the precious people who work behind the scenes, our hardworking brothers and sisters 
in construction? What is their work, lifestyle, and daily routine? How can getting involved in this work as a young person lead to rewarding opportunities in the future? And how can all of us support these self-sacrificing servants of Jehovah? We invite you to watch and listen as some of our dear construction workers tell their stories. There's something special about construction. Sometimes you travel to the middle of nowhere and we've met construction groups and there's just a vibe. There's just a we're family uh, and uh, you're going to have a good time. So we kind of grew up around construction, which was a huge privilege. Our parents were both involved in construction on one particular assembly hall. Yeah, we just heard from a few different characters and they just seemed to be having so much fun. And the thought of having fun and to be in full-time service for Jehovah was very, very appealing. What I like the most about my assignment is knowing that I can be a useful tool in Jehovah's hands and that wherever he sees a need, I can help. My mom's example later helped me to decide to enter full-time service. And when it came to doing more for Jehovah, she taught us to make Jehovah service our way of life. We really do have a lot of fun on the team. Um, it's a real a mix of characters, ages, experience, and that's really important um, because we're doing a serious work at times, um, but Jehovah's happy God and he wants us to enjoy our assignments. I remember one particular convention where I heard a talk about goals. It kind of made me just take a pause and think about what my goals were. What do I really want to do in my service to Jehovah? Have I yet done anything that's really shown him that I'm putting my life squarely in his hands. And I think that that was that moment in that talk that I thought it is time for an adventure with Jehovah. Fun, enjoyment, adventure, upbeat music, smiling faces. So far, this video has been a masterclass in emotional manipulation. Watchtower wants JWs to get hyped and apply to serve full time. I mean, how could you not? Look at all these happy people. It's also fascinating that these four individuals were all raised in the religion, indoctrinated from birth. This is all they've ever known. Carolina put it best when she said, And when it came to doing more for Jehovah, she taught us to make Jehovah service our way of life. I mean, when your whole life consists of serving Jehovah by performing unpaid labor, then of course, these assignments would seem attractive. Why stay back home and knock on doors till you drop dead, when you can travel to a foreign country and feel you're part of something extra special? If service to God is an obligation, then might as well have some fun while doing it, right? <laughs> the routine of a construction servant starts at Bethel with morning worship. We love morning worship. It's almost like a mini convention. You just get that little something to keep you going through the day. And then we've got a full day from eight till five. I enjoy lunch here on site with the rest of the construction family and some of the Bethel family. What's really important for all of us on the project is to maintain our own spirituality. We have an environment where you can do good quiet study in our assignments. It's definitely been when, when we focused on the ministry at the weekends, what happens in the week was always better. Something else I enjoy about being here in my routine is spending time with my friends. We don't just work, but Jehovah lets us have fun. Jehovah lets us have fun like a benevolent dictator. <laughs> we saw the schedule for these volunteers. The morning starts with some indoctrination, followed by nine hours of unpaid labor. Then you're expected to indoctrinate yourself again through your personal study. And if that wasn't enough, you are still expected to go out and knock on doors during the weekend instead of, you know, resting a bit. 
Oh, but it's all good because we can enjoy a few hours of recreation with our other unpaid buddies. Jehovah lets us have fun. Watchtower was very intentional in choosing Africa as a filming destination. Look at all those cultural dances, different environments. I think they're all very appealing to the regular American JW, who might only know of life preaching in the suburbs and watching football in their free time, of course. This is gonna look attractive to them. Watchtower is very aware that becoming a full-time unpaid laborer takes courage. So now they will show us that no one has a valid excuse to not volunteer. Also notice how the music changes from upbeat and fun to serene and calming. So I have no construction background at all. So everything that I've been able to enjoy with the project has been because brothers have shown some confidence and given me the opportunity to learn. There's a huge variety of roles within a construction project of this size. Obviously there's the needs for the real skills of trades that are needed to actually build the buildings, but there's a vast support network that can often be office based. We're from quite simple backgrounds. We had simple jobs and what Jehovah has managed to achieve with us always amazes us, really, because we now do jobs that we never would have imagined that we could have done. So every assignment that we've had, I think we've felt quite overwhelmed, overwhelmed. inexperienced. I think sometimes when you're completely out of your comfort zone is when Jehovah can give you what you most need. So the end outcome is always an enormous blessing. And so the blessings always outweigh the challenges. Something else that's really helped us through challenges is the brothers and sisters we've worked with. Always there for us, always with a comforting word, uh, a hug, an arm around the shoulder, and often that's really helped us get through challenging situations as well. I think the greatest challenge I faced and continue to face is a fear of the unknown. The fear of filling out an application and sending it, of an assignment that I don't know how to carry out or if I'm capable of, and of going somewhere else and not knowing how to get there. Despite the challenges I have faced in Jehovah's service, I have always received help. And on one occasion, when I was traveling to my new assignment, I had logistical issues that arose because of the pandemic. In my case, the branch was always there to support me in everything, with all the decisions I had to make and the documents I had to get for the trip. One of the Bible accounts that's always meant a lot to me is David and Jonathan, and the fact that they really didn't know each other that long, but had such an incredible friendship and bond. And I really feel the congregation has been that for me out here. Um, ones that you meet and just within a very short period of time you think they're going to be like family there I'm, I'm going to know them forever on a project you could be far away from those that really do know all those years before or your family so you're so reliant on that support so we have learned that these four lovely people had no prior construction experience don't get me wrong, I respect their courage and determination to get out of their comfort zone and learn. And I'm sure there are sincere people who really want to reach out and help others. But here we also see Watchtower's blatant hypocrisy in action. Jehovah's Witnesses are constantly discouraged to pursue college education because that will rob them of the time they should be dedicating to God. Sometimes people will say, well, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses are against education. Well, that's ridiculous. We're not against education. Uh, we are pro-education. It's just that we are selective with who does the educating. We promote divine education. We believe it to be superior because it leads to everlasting life. Hard to believe. And sometimes some parents will drop their child off at a university, especially when they send them away from home. 
away from their established theocratic structure. And elders that serve there will tell you, and I've been in a lot of places where there's, a, they call college towns, time and again an elder or servant in some cases too, they drop their child off, a few months, they went to a few meetings, they're gone. Parents are all upset. Why did you do more for my son? Why did you do more for my daughter? I would say, who dropped him off? <laughs> the elders are heartbroken. They try. No, a lot of them personally. So you have to decide that. You want to take the risk? Your call. We're warning you. But Watchtower also encourages members to receive higher education in the branch so they can benefit not themselves and their families, but the corporation. I mean, how more selfish can Watchtower be? So there is no work we do or assignment we might have that isn't really just giving back to Jehovah a little bit of what He has given us. Looking back, the only thing that I regret is not putting my application in even sooner. But there's nothing that I regret about having put it in and the life that Jehovah's allowed me to enjoy since then. Working with a team of brothers and sisters, what a massive privilege. You're not in the world, you're not in Satan's system. Um, you're just surrounded by characters who have the same goal. Of course, it's not a Watchtower video without a condescending comment towards unbelievers. You know ma'am, JWs are not the only people who volunteer, right? Charities all around the world are carried out by both Christians and atheists, Hindus and Muslims. They are also unpaid, but they spend their time feeding the hungry and clothing the poor, not producing religious propaganda which will end up in the rubbish bin. This Karen has never even experienced the outside world. She really believes this is the best life she could be living. Even though, when she retires, all you stuff by Watchtower, she will not have a single dollar invested into her retirement and no children to take care of her. This is like watching a tragedy unfold in real time. It's not easy living in this system. I think when we're in full-time service, when we're giving of ourselves to Jehovah in that way, he just gives back so much more. It just becomes a great way to live your life. You're serving Jehovah, you're with a great group of people and you're having a great time. And who wouldn't want a piece of that? We love our dear brothers and sisters who have willingly extended themselves in theocratic service. And we know that you do too. Oh my God, is that Uncle Tony? There's just one thing missing here. <laughs> That's better. We thank all of you for the spirit you show in helping maintain your local places of pure worship. We commend all of you who, like David, Jasmine, Jonathan, and Carolina, made the decision as a youth to volunteer for Jehovah's service. We are confident that young ones will set similar goals and experience the unique joy that working with Jehovah brings. We also want to thank the thousands of special full-time servants and volunteers who work behind the scenes on construction projects around the world. Your work is appreciated and worthy of much commendation. Your tireless efforts to construct, remodel, and maintain places of pure worship benefit all of us. Benefit all of us? Bro, they benefit you the most. You're gonna be living off donated money till you drop dead. These poor volunteers that you're using will be thrown off into the streets once they're too old to serve. Hey Jeffrey, fuck off. Your work contributes to the advancement of kingdom interests. And above all, it warms the heart of our Heavenly Father, Jehovah. It's so fitting that the final part of this nasty propaganda involves this asshole claiming to know what warms the heart of God. Jeffrey, if there is a loving God hiding up in the clouds, I think his heart would be warmed at seeing the charity work carried out by all these horrific heathens that you'll destroy soon instead of the cold, calculated production of propaganda that you are now directing. There you have it folks, 
This is how Watchtower convinces its members to surrender their lives. By using out of context Bible verses, by using peer pressure from current volunteers, by presenting unpaid labor as fun, and by claiming that performing this unpaid labor makes the God of the universe happy. <laughs> Once you leave this religion, you can't help but notice how manipulative these videos are. The visuals, the music, the experiences, all designed to hook in young, impressionable people to surrender their lives to the cult. And this is just one video out of dozens that have been produced on the topic. The propaganda will not stop running, but I will not stop debunking it anytime soon. So, what did you think of Jeffrey Winder's debut on this channel? Let me know in the comments below. If you would like to support my activism, please consider joining me on Patreon. For only $1 a month, you gain early access to all my videos and help me keep this channel running. If you would like to make a one-time donation, you can do so through the links below. I want to give a special shout out to Andrea G joining the Tony Morris rank on Patreon. Andrea, you are so lovely. Thank you very much. Also, a big thank you to all my Patreons and subscribers for being here with me. Take it easy, guys. Have a wonderful day and stay away from the tower. F is for fire that burns down the whole town. Use for uranium bombs. N is for no survivors when you're done. Those things aren't what fun is all about.